Bay Highway finds itself in the Northumbrian market town of Hexham. If you're coming from Newcastle, you travel up the lovely Tyne Valley, and as you approach the town, you spot Hexham's famous abbey. Mind you, it's a town in which you might find yourself with your back to the wall, but it's a special wall, Hadrian's Wall. It crosses the Tyne at the old Roman fort of Chester's. And that's where we're off now to join the Hexham Mill Voice Choir with a special arrangement of Jesus Shall Reign. Jesus shall reign wherever sun melts his successive journeys run. His kingdom stretched from shore to shore till moon shall wax and wane no more. Blessings abound wherever he reigns. The prisoner leaps to lose his chains. The weary find eternal rest, and all the sons of want are blessed. Let every creature rise and drink the cure. is of course a largely agricultural area but farmers have to go to market somewhere that's where Hexham comes in because it has the largest livestock auction market in the northeast and with me is farmer William Oliver whose family have been farming in the shadow of the wall for over 100 years William what's it what's it like up there is it grim and bleak well in, in the winter time yes but uh, every cloud is a silver lining and it's nice when the sun shines it's very picturesque and we learn to live with these things. But what's it like farming in Northumberland as a rule? Well, Northumberland farming in general is a livestock farm, farming area. And uh, I find from my part of it, we get great reward from the, this time of year, the newborn lambs and calves. And we find that it's uh, the start of a new year. And, and our livelihood depends on what we do this, this time of year. Yeah. But we're here now at the uh, the auction mart, and I'm fascinated by what goes on, but I can't understand what the auctioneer is saying. Oh, well, they've all got the, the, their own lingo, so to speak. Uh, they're generally telling you that what the beast is, and uh, how you use the persuasive attitude to tell you that it's the one that you should buy. But what makes a good auctioneer? Oh, well, these chaps are uh, professionals at their job, and, and they, first of all, have got to roughly assess the value of the beast in front of them. But how do you know where the bids are coming from? Oh, well, everyone has their own little sort of uh, idiocies or something funny that they do. They can <laughs> yeah. flick a catalogue or knock the ash off the cigarette or scratch your ear scratch or something, your ear, yeah. do something daft like that. <laughs> but the, the auctioneer soon gets to know who his, who his men are. He can soon... Um, he, well, he knows them from, from way back. Way, from way back, because they, yeah. they all know who's going to buy that type of stock in front of them. So he's got his eye out for the... He's, he's, he's looking for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go and see what they're doing. Yeah, we'll, there, we'll we? do that. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, well, all right, sir, here we go there. What are you going to give? I'm having 25 dollars to get 30 now. Five hundred bit of five, another four dollars on the buy. Wait a five dollar bit now. Thirty dollar, thirty, will you give me thirty? Make it thirty bit of bomb. Thirty dollar, will you give me thirty? Who would have been the hundred dollar bit? Thirty dollar bit now. Thirty five, will you give me thirty five? I'll make it thirty five, a bit of thirty five. Who would have been it at a thirty five dollar bit? I only scratched my ear. I didn't think I'd finish up with a cow. No, well, but he didn't. It was me that bought the cow. Thank heaven for that. What do you think of the show so far? <laughs>
That was local musician Michael Chapman with his old friends Murray Pryor and Rick Kemp with their song, Love's Not Just a Word. Hexham has been a centre of Christianity for over a thousand years. From 647 AD, when Bishop Wilfred chose this site for the building of an important church, the fifth stone church in England and one of the grandest in Europe at the time. A monastery was soon founded alongside, which became the seat of eight bishops, and a unique reminder of the monastic past on the midnight stairs used by the monks on their way to prayers. Here now to give his welcoming prayer to visitors like you and me is the rector of Hexham Abbey, the Reverend Timothy Withers Green. This is the house of God and he is here. Pray then to him who loves you and bids you welcome. Give thanks for those who in centuries past have built this place to his glory. Praise him in the beauty of art and music, architecture and craftsmanship, and worship him, the one God and Father of us all, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
The Abbey Choir providing singing worthy of this great building. Over the centuries, the echo of the words of that hymn, All Thy Works Shall Praise Thy Name, must have rung out from these medieval choir stalls. And a lifetime commitment here is testimony to ex choir boy Jack Pescott's Love of the Abbey. Hello, Jack. Howdy, how do, you do sir, Harry. Won't you take a seat? Thank you. These are the old Roseli cords, hence the ledge on the back for the monks to rest while they were supposed to be standing uh, to perform their ceremony in the service uh, matins at midnight. You've been a choir boy, and I sat in this seat here 57 years ago when I first joined the Abbey Choir. And uh, when you qualified to become a full member of the boys' choir, you were presented with your surplus, and the rest of your pals carried out a little ceremony by holding your arm above your head and pouring a glass of water down your sleeve. <laughs> Who sat in that stone seat there? That is the Frith Stool, St. Wilfred's Bishop's Throne, also used as a coronation chair for the kings of Northumbria. And another a very important function was that it was the seat of sanctuary. Fugitives fleeing from the civil authorities sought sanctuary in here, claimed the right of sanctuary, and sat in that seat. But Hexham once defied Henry VIII, didn't he? Yes, they? at the dissolution of the monasteries in 1538, Henry VIII sent his commissioners up here to claim possession of the church and its lands, and the people in the town held the monks in such high veneration, they resisted the king's forces and defied him. Now, as I come down the midnight staircase there, I noticed a very interesting stone at the bottom. What, what's that? Yes, that is a Roman standard bearer's tombstone. He was killed about the year 112. Flavinus was his name, and he was a member of the Calvary Regiment of Petriana, which was billeted at the Chesters. Nowadays, spectacular views from the wall beckon historians and tourists to tramp the lonely miles capturing the spirit of Roman Britain. The Roman fort of Chester's was built to guard the wall when it crossed the River Tyne. Over 100,000 tourists a year come to see it, and are warmly greeted by custodian William Rutherford, who's about to retire after 17 years. Hello, Willie. Hello, sir. Now, how much of the wall can we still see? Well, very large sections of wall are still to be seen to the west of Chester's with uh, forts, uh, mile castles, and turrets. Uh, originally, it extended, of course, from the east coast to the west coast over the narrowest part of England. Um, it's still a great attraction for visitors from overseas. Some of them do a pilgrimage along the wall. Um, I do this myself each year, and um, it gives me a time for contemplation. I feel it recharges my batteries, as it were. And uh, as I look to the, the, to the north, to the Cheviots, and west to the Solway, I think, uh, you know, there must be a master plan behind all this, just as there was a master plan for the building of the wall. And, and what about um, Chester's itself? What, what do people come to see here? Well, the, the important things at Chester's, of course, are the military bathhouse, which, um, it's considered to be the finest example of its kind in Britain. And of all the stories and little legends about the place, what's your favorite? Well, there's one about the, this little flower which grows on the walls at Chester's. Uh, and will be blooming in a few weeks' time, a little purple flower called Urinus alpinus. It's um, commonly known as fairy foxglove. And it's believed that the seeds of this flower were brought in the sandals of a Roman soldier. Well, thank you very much, Willie. Now, I believe you married a Hexhamshire lass. So, in her honor, and to wish you were in your retirement, here's Johnny Handel and the Tyne Valley Brass with the Hexhamshire lass. <laughs> Hey for the cup and the feather, hey for the bonny lass true that lives in Hexhamshire, true to the savey's sake, and now are the moss and the maya, I'll gonna say me bonny lass that lives in Hexhamshire. A mother she loved her better, all of the lassie me sell, but devil I can I get at her, through with the savey's sake, and now are the boss and the maya, all gone and see me bonny lass that lives in Hexhamshire. <laughs> This love, this love of 
this love I'm weary Sleep I can I get none For thinking on me dearie Through for the savey's sake And the world the boss and the mayor I'll go and save me bonnie lass That lives in a Hexham Shire Hey for the thick and the thin Hey for the mood and the mayor Hey for the bonnie lass true That lives in Hexham Shire Through for the savey's sake And there were the boss and the mayor I'll gonna say me bonnie lass That lives in Hexham Shire Through for the savey's sake I were the boss and the mayor I'll gonna say me bonnie lass That lives in Hexham Shire <laughs> By now you're probably thinking, what a peaceful place Hexham is. But it might surprise you to learn that this building I'm standing outside is the oldest purpose-built jail in England. It's been here since 1330. I had a feeling when I started highway that I'd finish up in clink. These people have just come back from one of my concerts. Luckily, the person in charge didn't go. Flora Fairburn, why a museum in a jail? Well, we've got a beautiful old building, and we had to do something with it. And, of course, you've got lots of Roman army museums. So we decided we would cover a forgotten period, and we'd cover the Border Reavers. Who are these people, then? Well, the Border Reavers were, in fact, robbers and bandits. And... They would more or less pick up anything that wasn't nailed down. So, sheep, cattle... Rustlers, were they? Definitely. Northern version of the Wild West. <laughs> oh, yes. We just had it a little earlier. What happened when they were caught? Well, if you committed the 13th commandment, thou shalt not be caught, then I'm afraid it was a hanging offence. But uh, was everybody involved? Oh, yes. Yes. This was, this was really a case of everyone from farm labourer to peer of the realm. It really was a widespread thing. What happened to Hexham after the Reavers' days were over? Well, some say it never really ended. But if you want to look at the more peaceful times in the farming area, if you go to Hyundai Farm Tractor Museum, just a few miles away, you'll see what we're doing. Many thanks, Flora. And I think the steel ice span are ready over at Hyundai now with the oldest working tractor in the world.
the good old times of England were not what they were cracked up to be. There was no Newcastle United for a start. But more importantly, there was no National Health Service. The Christian Church alone had to care for the sick and the poor. Like this hospital, for instance, which is run by a 400-year-old religious order of St. Camillus, a movement totally dedicated to the care of the sick. The two brothers in charge are with me, uh, Brother Benedict and Father Craven. Now, first of all, who does what? Well, Brother Benedict does all the corporate works of Mary's corporate works. I do the spiritual Lord here and the general, but since we have a vow to look after all types of sickness, he does a certain amount of the spiritual and I do a certain amount of the corporate. Well, how did the order begin? It started in Rome just over 400 years ago when hospitals at that time were pretty, what to use a modern term, grotty places. Yeah. And St. Camillus saw tremendous need. He had been a patient himself, so he experienced the lack of care uh, of the sick. And it was through that uh, he was inspired to gather a, a young a group of young men around him to dedicate themselves to the service of the sick for the love of Christ. Father Craven, uh, Craven's a very unusual name, isn't it? Well, it could be at times. I've been doing a bit of research. Haven't you got a relation in our profession? I have, yeah, a young Gemma. Yes. When did you see her last? Well, when she came over to Dublin for last June for my 40 years celebration as a priest, she made a suddenly appeared on me. Did she really? Yeah. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> hey, where, <laughs> where have you come from? I came up from London. I flew up, just arrived. <laughs> Did you know this? <laughs> We've kept it quiet from you for ages. <laughs> Come on, Gemma. You can have a little chat later on. Now, you're not getting away with it that easily. No, I, I didn't think I would, actually. But thank you for bringing me up here to see my uncle anyway. It's well worth it. You've got a little reading to do, all right? I have, so I shall wander off and do my little bit. And I'll announce it. Righty ho. A poem written by a famous son of Hexham, Wilfred Gibson which is embossed on the town of Morial Fountain, known locally as the Pant. It was written here in Hexham in 1901, and Gemma's now going to read it for us. O oh, you who drink my cooling waters clear, forget not the far hills from whence they flow, where over fell and moor, and year by year, spring, summer, autumn, winter, come and go, with showering sun and rain, and storms and snow. Where over the green bents forever flow the four free winds of heaven. Where time falls in solitary places calm and slow. Where pipes the curlew and the plover calls. Beneath an open sky my waters spring. Beneath the clear sky welling fair and sweet. A draught of coolness for your thirst to bring a sound of coolness in the busy street. sung by all our friends, together with the Hexham Circuit Methodist Ladies' Choir. The people of Hexham have shown me some wonderful hospitality. They've had their fiery and violent past, but their caring presence is a reminder that families and people can share in a great sense of community. Next week, we go with the body to Scotland to Ban Model and Royal Deeside. See you then.